coming this morning. We come, as always, through the intercession of Mary. And as we do so, we call to mind our souls. We ask the Lord for his great pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God, and see my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done.
of the living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Nehemiah. Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which consisted of men, women, and those children old enough to understand. Standing at one end of the open place that was before the water gate, he read out of the book from daybreak until midday. In the presence of the men, the women, and those children old enough to understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra the scribe stood on a wooden platform that had been made for the occasion. He opened the scroll so that all the people might see it, for he was standing higher up than any of the people. And as he opened it, all the people rose. Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people, their hands raised high, answered, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and prostrated themselves before the Lord, their faces to the ground. Ezra read plainly from the book of the law of God, interpreting it so that all could understand what was read. Then Nehemiah, that is his excellency, and Ezra, the priest scribe, and the Levites who were instructing the people, said to all the people, Today is holy to the Lord your God. Do not be sad and do not weep. For all the people were weeping as they heard the words of the law. He said further, Go, eat rich foods and drink sweet drinks, and allot portions to those who, have no who had nothing prepared, for today is holy to our Lord. Do not be saddened this day, for rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. Now the body is not a single part, but many. You are Christ's body, and individually parts of it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Was in 120 countries, 
with over 5,000 nuns working completely for free, and she still had people that didn't like her. There's a man named Christopher Hitchens who wrote a book about Mother Teresa attacking her, and they brought it to Mother Teresa and they said, Mother, I don't really know how to tell you this, but you got to see this book they wrote about you. And she, she read it, she closed the book, and you know what she said? Praise God. Praise God. Now, Mother's a better woman than me. If it was me, I'd be like, let me have her. <laughs> let me have her. But you know what she did after she read that book? She sat down and she wrote this poem that I want to read to you, so bear with me. And the name of this poem is called Anyway. Anyway, it goes like this. People are often unreasonable, illogical, and self-centered. Forgive them anyway. If you are kind, people may accuse you of selfish, ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. If you're successful, you will win some false friends and some true enemies. Succeed anyway. If you're honest, people may cheat you. Be honest anyway. If you find serenity and happiness, others will be jealous. Find happiness anyway. The good you do today will be forgotten tomorrow. Do good anyway. Give the world the best you have, and it may never be enough. Give the best you have anyway. You see, in the final analysis, it is between you and God. And it was never between you and them anyway. One of the things that Mother is telling us, I believe, in this poem is this. If we want to get down to brass tacks, if you want to take away something from what I'm telling you this morning, it's this. There is nothing positive about being negative. There is nothing positive about being negative. You know, life is unfair, in case you haven't noticed. For some of us here, maybe we're divorced. And all of a sudden, when I'm divorced, I find myself having to do the things my spouse used to do. The finances, mowing the lawn, whatever. I know one man who's divorced, and he had to bring his teen daughter to go buy a prom dress. And he calls me, he's like, Father, how do I... How do I pick out a prom dress? I'm like, you're asking a celibate priest? <laughs> like, how would I know? Right? I said, the rule of thumb, whatever you think you should get, get the opposite. Then you get it. <laughs> For many of us that are grandparents, maybe you find yourself raising your grandchildren because your children don't want to do it. For some of us, we have physical ills that, that they haven't diagnosed, they don't know what it is, but we're just always in pain. <laughs> Everyone here is a have and a have not, believe it or not. Let me say that again. All of us, 100%, is a have and a have not. In other words, there's someone sitting next to you or someone you know who has more than you. And you think, man, they don't have the same problems I've got. But guess what? They're saying the same thing about you. Maybe emotionally you're stronger than they are, but they have a bigger bank account. Whatever. We're all haves and have-nots. Anybody here remember a woman in our parish who used to sit right here? Her name was Mary Ruth Field. She died when she was 102. Man, that's a lot of birthday candles. That's a lot of turkey dinners. So I used to, uh, I went to go see uh, Mary Ruth right before she passed. And she could barely see. She could barely see. Almost blind. 102 years old. And her family wouldn't mind me sharing. She, her arms were almost totally purple from when they were trying to draw blood. And she looks at this nurse who is less than a quarter of her age <laughs> and says to this nurse, thank you for everything you're doing. Thank you for everything you're doing. And she died shortly thereafter. 
She didn't say, why am I in this situation? I can't even see. My body's shutting down. You're drawing more blood? Are you kidding me? That's what I'd be saying. But Mary Ruth was a Christian to the end. There's nothing positive about being what? Nothing. It's not fair. For many of us, we, we kind of get this point. You know what pouting is? You ever pout? I'm going to pout the Lord until you give me what I want. You know what I used to do? When I was pouting, when I was two years old, my mom said, I'd be on the ground in the kitchen screaming and screaming and screaming. And she'd be in there like watching The Price is Right. <laughs> she'd be close. So I'd start yelling louder. And she'd turn the volume up. <laughs> and eventually I got over. It's the same with us. Sometimes the Lord saying, okay, it's going to be okay. I'm going to pout well, it's fine. But at a certain point when we pick ourselves up, we have to attack. On the other side of the anger, we have to realize there's nothing positive about being what? <laughs> nothing. And when we're negative, it impacts everybody else. I recently read an article in Forbes magazine, and they interviewed all these CEOs of these big Fortune 500 companies. All these men and women that direct these huge companies. And they ask them, what is the number one quality that you look for in your employees? What is the number one quality you look for in all your employees? You know what they said across the board? Had nothing to do with education, nothing to do with experience. You know what it was? Attitude. Attitude. Because there's nothing positive about being what? <laughs> a few months ago, um, right when it started turning cold, I laid down one night to go to sleep. And I was about to fall asleep, and I kept, uh, I was about to fall asleep, you know, it was a long day. And I started hearing cats meowing in my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> So I look in the backyard, there's four cats. A mother and three little ones. Oh, man. Oh, man. So I, I said, I'll deal with this in the morning. So the next day, I called my friend, and she rescues that animal. So she comes over, and she got these cats. And thanks for God, they found a good mom. Don't call PETA. Okay. So she said, uh, you know, Father, you got to give them, what are their names? You have to name them. Because people are going to ask, what are their names? And I said, believe me, at 2 a.m. I had a lot of names. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I said, well, you gotta give me, you got to give me some names you're going to ask. I said, fine. Let's, how about the four of them? We'll call them John, Paul, George, and Ringo. <laughs> I said, well, at least one of them is female. I said, fine. John, Paula, George, and Ringo. <laughs> so, um... You know, it's very touching, and I say goodbye to the cats. But think about this, folks. Is it fair that some cats, this poor mother cat gave birth to her little ones under my patio, and yet some cats live in the palace of her cell? It's not fair. It's not fair. In our own lives, sometimes we feel like maybe we're kind of that mama cat. We look at our lives compared to other people. It's not fair. It's not. And we pick ourselves up and we realize, okay, this is tough. This is a difficult situation, but God's grace is here to help me get through it. Amen. Amen. I want to share with you a story, and I'll be very honest with you, brothers and sisters. I was not going to share it with you. And I decided not to. But after praying about it, I felt like God kind of put this on my heart, so here it is. I read a book recently called Choosing Hope. And the name of the book, um, Choosing Hope, was written by a woman named Caitlin Roy. Now, you may have never heard her name. But Caitlin, Caitlin Roy is a first grade teacher. And on December 14, 2012, she was working at Sandy Hook Elementary. 
And Adam Lanza came in at 935 and killed 20 children. 20. 28 people died that day. This woman heard all these gunshots and screams, and she had 16, 16 first graders that she's in charge of. And she has a split second to react. She can't deliberate, she's got to move immediately. She took 16 first graders and put them into a bathroom that was made for a first grader. It was so small, there was no sink in it. It was made for a first grader. 16 children. She gets them packed in there and then realizes that the door is on the inside. She can't close it. She has to get them all out again, pull out the door, get them all back in. The whole time she's hearing screams. Now can you imagine? They're this close to each other. This close. The heat. One poor kid was so scared he sat on the toilet flush and flushed the toilet, drawing attention, and they were all nervous. And she told them it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. We're going to get through this. Even though in her mind she later said she was thinking something different. About five minutes went by of total silence. Eventually she heard a knock at the door. It's the police. She said, if you're the police, you've got a key. Open it up. They had to test eight keys before they finally got the right one. She got them all out. That very night, that very night, she was being interviewed by Diane Sawyer on what she went through. That week, her first grade class in the school there received almost 300,000 teddy bears. 300,000. Over one million dollars. And you know what these kids decided to do? They didn't decide to keep it all for me. Guess what they did? They gave it away. You know the school they chose? Guess where it was located? Tennessee. So they had all this stuff that people had sent from all over the world. And instead of keeping it, what did these first graders do? <laughs> Gave it away. So let's get down to brass tacks, folks. These are first graders that turn something horrific into what? Something positive and beautiful. Today, Caitlin Boy started a nonprofit called Classes for Classes, and this is what she does. She connects kids that want to help other kids. These are children. So what does that mean for you and me? I would propose this. If these kids who are first graders can some turn something so horrible and diabolic into something just so wonderful, how much more can you and I do? as adults. What's the lesson there for us as adults? It's this. There is nothing positive about being what? Yeah. Nothing. And the light of Christianity always shines into the darkness of death and evil. And it always overcomes it. you got to choose hope. Please stand. I believe in one God. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, the God of not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and in for our salvation, the kingdom of heaven. Father, the Holy Spirit is incarnate in the earth of the earth. 
Pope Francis, Bishop Terry Stock, Father Ben, and Father Rito, that they will help us to grow in faith and love so that we may dare to become all that Christ calls us to be. Let us pray to the Lord. For the building of a more humane world, for respect for all human life from conception to natural death, and for a greater respect for the sanctity of Christian marriage. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, God, God, God. They, that we who receive the body of Christ in the Eucharist may be mindful of the needs of Christ's body, the church, especially in its suffering members. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, God, God, God. For an end to violence and hatred between racial and ethnic groups, that we may respect our differences and that God will establish peace in our hearts. <coughs> Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord God, for our military serving overseas and for their families who support them with their love and await their return, let us pray to the Lord. Lord God, that those contemplating a vocation to the priesthood, permanent diaconate, or religious life may have the courage to answer God's call in their lives, let us pray to the Lord. Lord God, that the Lord's mercy will embrace those who have died and those who will die today. Let us pray to the Lord. God, our Father, through the intercession of Mary, we ask you now to hear and to answer our prayers if they be in accordance with your will. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. 